Camping in the bush, there really is nothing like it. Whether you're setting off on a short trip or a lap of Australia in a caravan, some point you're going to think about going somewhere more remote and camping it. It is really unique to get out of the van. So today we're going to show you what we actually need. What do we need? What do you actually need when you go camping? First up, you're going to need some form of accommodation, whether that's a swag or in our case, a couple of tents. We've got two Austrail Skygazer tents. They're four people tents, but they fit myself and Steph in one of them and the boys in the other. Let's take a look inside. Inside we have everything for a comfortable night's sleep. It's really important to me that we can wake up feeling refreshed in the morning so that everyone's ready for a great day out. We've got our beds here. First up underneath here, we have the Austrail Pro Stretch Mats. These are an absolute gem for being comfortable. I've never been so impressed by a small amount of foam being so comfortable overnight. We've then got our sleeping bags on top. Over here, we keep our bathroom gear. We keep the toothbrushes so that the kids can access them as well. But most of our bathroom gear stays in one of these bags. If you are lucky enough to have a bathroom on site and you camp, then you can take that up there with you to the block to have a shower. And then we take our small travel towels as well, so we don't have to take big bulk. Saves on bulk, us. keep everything small when camping, that's Massive the idea. That Speaking one. of keeping it light, we use these grocery bags to keep our clothes in. These can shove up nice and tight in the top of the car, saving us a heap of room. Outside the tent, we keep everything neat with one of these sea gear mats. This actually lives in the back of the car. We use it with our car awning. Um, in short, it keeps mud, sand, things like that being traipsed into the tents. Well, at least as best you can when you're camping, that's part of the fun. Let's have a look at the kitchen. The camp kitchen. Now we set this up on our outdoor table, which is currently on the roof of the car because we've got a nice little picnic table here on Fraser Island. Yeah, how good's that? Big Fraser Island. So we take a little camp stove with us um, in the car. We've got our kettle. This one is a brilliant one. We actually use it in the van as well because it folds down to nothing. So again, No damage when driving. Over. Compact. That's, that's a winner. The other thing we've got under the table here you might notice is we've got a freshwater bucket to collect water for doing dishes or other things. We've also got our dishes tub. When we get dirty dishes it goes in here, it seals, stops animals getting in and it also doubles as a bit of security overnight for our rubbish bag which we generally hang from a tree. It's important to have some drinking water so we have our drinking water tub down here raised up on a crate so that we can access that one easily. That's a 20 litre, we've got 60 litres when we go camping, good for a good three or four days plus. Yeah. Then in our crate up here, we've got all of our cooking gear. A lot of people put this in a sealed tub, which I guess would be ideal, but we have this um, in our van storage anyway. The trick is to use what you already have so that you're not having to store additional containers. So we've got everything in our crate here. This is actually one of our cereal containers from the van, but I pop all of our utensils in that that we need to take camping with us. We have a container with our cutlery in it. That Keeping that nice up. and clean and together. Yep, any of our dishwashing detergents. Uh, in this bag, to keep them clean again, we've got our bowls and our plates inside of there. And that actually lives in our car normally as well, so we've got plates on hand if we need them. Down the bottom, we've got our pots and pans, and these are stackable, collapsible, whatever you want to call them. They all go into one, one saucepan at the bottom. Nice and compact, we've got oil and bin bags. And for the mums out there, you know that these are essential. Our kids are grown up, they're not... Haven't seen them for a while. <laughs> But they are used every night to clean our feet and our hands before we go to bed or before mealtime. The feet do tend to get a little bit dirty when camping with all that charcoal in the sand, so it's nice to be able to clean them off. <laughs> Let's take a look at the car because this really is the hub when we leave the caravan and travel around Australia. Let's have a look. Generally at camp, this is going to be up, keeping the fridge cool. You can see in the back we've got a 65 litre angle fridge freezer. This is great because it freezes meat and frozen veg and also has the refreshment area for beers as well as I guess fresh fruit and veg if that's what you're into. Uh, we keep a tea towel in the back. We've got our Velcroed AeroGuard sanitizer sunscreen, easy to access and this all slides out with a fridge slide. I want to talk about power because running a fridge from your car is really a tough thing to do. You will flatten your battery if you don't have it set up right. We have a DC-DC charger by Red Arc in the back here. This is connected to a solar panel on the roof. So this is 150 watts of solar sitting in the sun, powering the auxiliary battery that the DC-DC charger is charging. Underneath I've got a 100 amp hour lithium battery which runs everything. 
You can see a couple of 12 volt sockets as well as a Ryobi charger with a battery on board. The reason for that is not only does it power my drills, there was a fan in the tent. I run a bit hot overnight, so I like to have a fan on. We've got our spotlight and a lantern, but we also have our USB charger. We've got a video online that shows you all of our Ryobi gear that we use when camping, but because we're on a lap of Australia, we've only got a little bit of it with us right now. When I'm planning our food for a camping trip, the most important part of that sentence is actually the planning because you need to know what you're going to eat to make sure you have enough food for the time period that you'll be away. I usually write out a meal plan and sometimes we even stick that on the side of the fridge here if it's a, a big trip, say two weeks like we did up at Cape York. Our food always then goes into the left hand side here, this is our pantry. This hasn't got a full uh, camping trip of uh, food in it at the moment because we've already been away for a few days but you can get the idea. We grab some things out of our pantry, things like our flour and our rice cake, all of our tea and coffee, things like that that are in sealed containers. It's good to have them sealed up. Then got things that are in a packet that can stack in really neatly. Even things like eggs I find actually are okay in here. We've four wheel drived around Fraser Island and the tally truck and everything and haven't had a broken egg. We've got our cereal. We tend to stick to the basics and just bring the wheat bix with us. The reality is you can't fit it all in here as you normally might have it. But we do bring some things like sortanas and at the back up here I've got some two fruits as well as some fresh fruit and stuff. This will normally be pretty jam packed but we have as our record was it almost two weeks two worth weeks. of food in the fridge off, yeah. and the drawer. Does a great job. Up in our fridge we've got our fridge on the left hand side with all your normal sort of fruit and veg, cheese, ham etc. On the right hand side I just wanted to show you how we prepare our meals. You don't want to spend your whole time cooking when you're away camping so what I do is I actually pre-make some meals such as this chow mein, pop them in a ziploc bag and freeze them flat like that. It's amazing how many meals you can fit over a new freezer then and I do the same for our mates, things like steak and sausages, put them into individual meal size in the bag, they just stack up in the freezer and they store a lot easier. All I have to do with that one then is cook some rice in a saucepan and we've got our meal. Gives you more time for being out there in places like the beach you can see behind us. On top of the car we've got this big grey box and this went on around Broome and that was when we added this camping gear to our setup when we realised we need to go camping to get to some of the best remote areas. Everything goes up in here for our camping setup from our sleeping bags, our mattresses, the tents, uh, even a toilet and pop-up toilet chair all goes up in there so it's ready to go when we decide to head off into the unknown. It's the next day, we've finished up camping for this trip. I thought I'd just show you laid out on the mat exactly what we take with us. So we've got our pillows here, uh, decoration pillow optional, but that's Alex's. Um, we've got our mats here. These are our sleeping mats that we showed you yesterday in the tents. We've got five of those, five sleeping bags. Our clothes here, we've got five clothes bags and we use just these bags here because we've already got them in the van, so they're nice and easy. This one here has our bathroom gear in it. We have our fan and shower and a couple of our tents. This one here is our mat that we pop down between our tents. It's pretty impressive that we can fit all of this up into that box. We get everyone involved to make that happen. Just like that, camp's packed up. Looks like we've never been here. We're gonna get now past Eli Creek. The high tide was about an hour ago. Hoping the time our run to get across, they say two hours either side of high tide. Let's roll that dice.